Hello everybody and welcome back to the CCNA routing and switching video series brought to you by ABY Design and Tech. In this video, we'll be having a look at the layer one aspects of Ethernet, Ethernet cabling. So I know what you're thinking at the moment. Uh, but I thought Ethernet was just a layer two protocol. That's what you told us in your in your OSI video. Well, primarily Ethernet does operate as a layer two protocol. We always look at it as a layer two protocol because it allows for layer two communications, but it also defines the layer one um the, the the layer one aspect so the the actual physical cabling how we put how we take that data and put it onto the wire how we send those bits over the wire it actually also defines that as well but primarily it's described as a layer two protocol the reason being because ethernet switches operate a layer two and ethernet does define a set of rules for how we move data within the same network However, we still need to have this physical cabling to connect our device together and so that our devices can use this physical cabling to actually send the data that they need to send, to send the frames they need to send. So, why does Ethernet define cabling? So, like I said before, Ethernet cabling essentially acts as the roads that, that carry data to their destinations, okay? And if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense for the guys who are defining how we are going to use the roads to send data to actually build these roads as well. It, essentially that's what Ethernet does, it's not only does it define, okay, this is how I'm going to send the data, this is how I'm going to put the data onto the wire and send it, also defines, okay, these are going to be the cabling standards we're going to use, okay, this is how we're actually going to use the cable, so it'll actually define how we use the cable to send the data, how we put the bits of data, the ones and zeros, onto the cable to send that data. The mover from point A to point B. Now, let's look at, at Ethernet cable, okay, the Ethernet cable, um, is uh, is made up of insulated copper wires that are protected by plastic. So this picture down here, this shows what an Ethernet cable looks like. So as you can see, it's copper wires, okay? So copper wires, and actually within the cable itself, those copper wires are protected by plastic, um, let's say, sh um, sheathing or something, or like plastic, which essentially goes over the cable. Uh, these, these wires, uh, they travel down from one end of the cable to the, to the other end. They're twisted, okay? So you think of them as being twisted. So you you can see it from here. They're twisted. The reason why they're twisted is that it reduces interference and therefore reduces crosstalk as we transmit these analog and, and digital signals. And these, these, these copper wires, they carry data, they carry these, these um, digital signals, but actually carrying electricity over the copper wires at a certain frequency. Now, as you can see that there's different types of Ethernet cables, different categories, different standards, and they will all use different frequencies to actually send this data over the wire. And at the end of each cable, there is what we call an RJ45 jack, which is to plug the actual wires into, to plug the cabling into. So the RJ45 jack, that is what, if you look on your laptop, you, you are going to see a, a Ethernet port. That's exactly what the Ethernet port is shaped like, okay? Ethernet port, the RJ45 jack is going to go into the, is the end which plugs into the devices. So let's say from your switch or to your your laptop or your, let's say, computer to computer, that's what's actually going to physically plug into the, to the physical devices. So if you look up here on the top left, we can see that inside the RJ45 jack, we have what we call these golden pins. And so the way it works, okay, is that when, you'll know this if you've made Ethernet cables, but essentially with Ethernet cabling, the copper wires, they have to go into those pins. They, the actual physical copper of the wire has to touch those pins and the wires have to be arranged in a certain order. So as you can see, the wires are actually color coded, white, green, green, brown, white, brown, orange. And depending on, we have one to eight pins. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight golden pins. Depending on the actual color of the wire, will depend on which pin we are going to terminate the wire at. So whether it's going to be pin one or pin two, pin three, etc. Now let's have a look inside the cable. Okay, so inside an Ethernet cable, well, it's made up of eight ind individual copper wires, okay? And those copper wires will terminate at pin connectors, which are inside the RJ45 jack, and we just saw that. that those, those golden pin connectors, those are the pin connectors inside the RJ45 jack, and every copper wire has to terminate at one of those pin connectors. And so, with Ethernet, we use one set of wires are used to carry data, and the other set of wires are used to receive data. And the way that we can think of this as kind of acting, imagine that these wires are lanes on a motorway. And on a motorway or a highway or whatever you want to call it, we have multiple lanes, and we have traffic, let's say, 
the first four lanes, traffic's going in one direction. The, the, the next set of four lanes, traffic's going in the other direction. Let's say north and south. That's exactly the same principle Ethernet works on there. When we're transmitting our data over these individual wires, the data can only ever go in one direction. We can't have data on those two same set of wires coming in the opposite direction. Otherwise, like in real life, like when we're driving on the motorway, there will be a collision. There will be an accident. And the wires are used to send and receive data. So the actual set of wires which are used to send and receive data will vary for each device, depending on which device it is. Okay. Now, up to 100 megabits per second, up to 100 megabits per second, okay, we use wires 1 and 2, so the white and green, and 3 and 6, uh, the white, orange, and orange, to send and receive data, okay? So, depending on, uh, let's say, a laptop, a laptop's going to use wires 1 and 2 to send data, 3 and 6 to receive data. Now, we know that our devices like laptops and computers connect to switches, okay? So, a switch cannot use wires one and two to send data otherwise it's going to be a collision the computer and the switch are going to be sending data at the same time the data is going to collide and it's going to be dropped it's going to be corrupted so a switch will actually use wires three and six to send data on wires two one and two to receive data now over the 100 the 100 megabits per second speed so 1000 megabits per second and over or one gig and over. We also use wires 4 and 5 and 7 and 8 to send and receive data. So up to 100 megabits per second, which I don't think anybody will really use anymore, wires 4, 5, 7 and 8 are unused, they're not used for anything. However, 1000 megabits per second and over, those wires are actually used to send and receive data. So those wires will actually carry bits of information, ones and zeros. And we commonly refer to this as pairs. So it'd be like we use pair one and two. That means that we use wire one and wires one and two to send data, or listen, we use pair three and six for receive. We use wire three and six to receive data, and we can have a two or four pair of wires to send and receive data. So with one thousand megabits per second, we're going to use four pairs. We're going to use one, two, three, six, four, five, seven, and eight to re to receive and send data. Um, for one hundred megs per for one hundred meg or below, we're going to use two pairs. So either. Uh, wires one and two or wires three and six um we have the straight through cable which essentially connects pins one to pins one pin two to pin two etc whatever you want to so yeah um with the crossover cable pin one or wire one so we have we connect the white and green wire to pin one on the left side and then to pin three on the right side we connect the green wire from pin 2 on the left side to pin 6 on the right side. Now can you see how the crossover cable can solve our issue? So in this case, both devices are going to be transmitting on pairs, uh, let's say, 3 and 6. However, because of the crossover cable, it actually crosses over from pin 1 to pin 3. That means that if we have a switch on the left, as they transmit on, let's say, wire 3, that's actually going to connect... No, so as they, as they send data out on the white and green wire, that's actually going to be run from pin 3 on the left side to pin 1 on the right side. Now, it'll be a bit easier once we actually can visualize this. So, as an example, okay, straight through cable. They transmit on pins 1 and 2, they receive it on pin 3 and 6. Um, there's no issue here. We can use a straight through cable because the switch and the PC are using completely different wires to send and receive data. Now the issue comes in is when we have two switches which connect together. If we were to use a straight through cable, then they would both be transmitting and receiving on pair three and six and that would cause a collision. That would cause data to become corrupted and be dropped. Now with the crossover cable, we always see here, pins one and two connect to pin three and six. So can you see, as the switch on the left side is sending data over pin 3 and 6. That data is actually going to be received by pins 1 and 2 on the right side. And the same thing as when the switch on the right side communicates with the switch on the left side. As it sends data over pin 3 and 6, that's going to be received by pins 1 and 2 on the left. And the crossover cable just crosses over the connections. So pin 1 is going to connect to pin 3. Pin 2 is going to connect to pin 6. Uh, if we're going to use 1000 megabits per second, pin 4 would connect to uh, pin 7, pin 5 would, would connect to pin 8, etc. Now let's look at some cabling standards. So obviously, now that we actually have the physical cabling, 
Um, Ethernet actually defines cabling standards. So these, the cabling standards um, are gonna improve and change throughout the um, history. So obviously as we progress, as we move forward, we're gonna get um, different cabling standards. These cabling standards define the maximum length of an Ethernet cable, um, the frequency that those electric signals are transmitted at, it's gonna define speeds, whether shielding or unshielding is used. So a shielded, a shielded cable, if you would open up a shielded cable, it looks like there's actually aluminum foil over the wires inside the cable. Now with shielding, it reduces interference and crosstalk further. Unshielded, we won't have that aluminum or type foil over the cable, which means that there is a higher chance of getting interference, there's a higher chance of getting crosstalk on the cable, uh, but it's, it's still to a minimal value. However, it's worth noting that CAS 6A onwards, um, shielded cable or shielded um, um, cabling is all that is used, okay? Now, standard 10 base T, this is, runs at 10 megabits per second, frequency of 16, 16 megahertz distance from 100 meters, and as you can see, we can see all the different cabling standards, etc. Now, as you can see is that as the cabling actually gets better, in terms of faster speeds, higher frequency, they the category changes as well. So the, the category just refers to uh, the the standard of the um, of of um, of the Ethernet cable, and generally, the higher the category, the better performance you're going to get from the cable. And as you can see, there's one limitation to all of the cabling standards: the 100 meters. 100 meters is the max distance. So that means if I want to plug my computer or laptop into a switch by Ethernet cabling, that switch can only be 100 meters away from my device. Now, this is just uh, a this is this 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 guide. I have seen devices which are slightly over the 100 meter limitation, like 102, 103. However, if you are further than 100 meters away from um, a switch, um, because normally you, you are gonna be plugging your devices into a switch. Uh, very, very rare though, you're gonna be plugging computers into computers or something. Uh, but if you are more than 100 meters away from a switch, either you will get slower speeds or you won't be able to send any data at all because the data is gonna be um, so corrupted or so weak or the performance is gonna be so bad that data won't be able to be transferred over that cable. And if you look online, there's there's many more cabling standards than this. I think we're now up to category 8A or something. Um, we can transfer 40 gigabits per, per second of data over Ethernet cable, 100 gigabits per second of data over a Ethernet cable. So if I was you, I'd also not only take note of this, but also check online as well, because uh, like I said, there are many different categories of Ethernet cabling. Now, the, like I said, the issue with, with Ethernet is that it's limited to a max distance of 100 meters. Now, in real life, you may be able to go slightly over this max limit, but, you, but you'll get reduced performance, and a lot of the time, it won't actually work. Now, this limit comes into play when you want to connect switches together. So if, if you think about it, is that the, the, our end devices, our printers, our PCs, our laptops, our cameras, APs, chances are they will be within this 100 meter limit distance from our switch that we want to plug into however the issue is is when we want to connect switches together because either switches are going to be the switches that we want to connect together to essentially connect all devices across our our, our site uh, to, to the same network either the switches are going to be too far away or they may be in different buildings and it's very very rare that you will have a switch within 100 meters of each other normally it'll be over the 100 meter limitation and that is when that is when fiber cables come into play so fiber cables, they support similar speeds to Ethernet cabling, and they normally support faster speeds than Ethernet. But the main difference is that they support much longer distances. They can carry data for much longer distances. The reason being, because unlike Ethernet cabling, so Ethernet cabling trans transmits data over copper wires, and it transmits data by actually carrying electrical signals at certain frequencies over those wires. Uh, fiber cables actually send data by transmitting light photons down a thin glass tube. As you can see, light can travel much further than what an electrical signal can. And because um, the fiber cable consists of two strands of glass, it's one for receiving data, one for trans transmitting data. Because it's transmitting light inside of glass, there's minimum interference and, mi and minimal signal degradation, which means data can be carried at a stronger strength for a, over a longer distance. 
And so fiber cables, they can send data in one of two modes. It is a single mode, which means light tra tra travels straight down the middle of the glass tube, or multi-mode, where the actual glass that the um, light is traveling down is slightly bigger. And so because it's slightly bigger, that that the light photons which are being sent can travel in multiple different directions. And as, as a rule of thumb, single mode can usually run off higher speeds at longer distances than multi-mode but if you're going for short distance fiber multi-mode would probably be your choice because it can carry higher bandwidth at shorter distances and so this is a physical rep or this is a logical representation um, of the difference between single mode and multi-mode so as you can see single mode the glass tube that the light is sent down is actually smaller and the light will travel down the center of the glass tube all the way to the end with multi-mode the glass tube is slightly bigger so that light has more paths that it can take as it travels down that glass tube and this is represented in this as you can see left right middle etc and so this um, slide which is essentially just looking um, at uh, some physical representation of what fiber cables actually look like so this is what fiber cables look like uh, the different connectors um, different ends but as you can see we have one cable or no sorry not one cable one glass tube for sending one glass tube for receiving and that's the, that is one of the most important things that i wanted to point out and if you have ever been involved in um fiber cabin you will understand that which side is sending which side is receiving is is very important because whatever it is is that if you want to connect two switches together then the ports that they are sending on have to be different to the ports that they are receiving on um now when you're fiber cabling you'll you'll or when you're doing uh, fiber cabling you'll often be swapping the ends etc as you as you patch through um, and you can actually test um, as you cable fiber you can just test it through a light source so you can get a light source which emits like some sort of laser light you can sign that down through um, the actual cable to see okay this is what uh, let's say side a is sending on let me see what end that is on side B so that I can swap it over so that the sending and receiving pairs are not are not connecting to, to the same ports. Unlike um, Ethernet, we also have cabling standards for fiber. So with, with fiber, as you can see, I'm not gonna go through them all, but as you can see is that they support much faster speeds than Ethernet. Okay, and for longer distances as well. And as you can see, single mode can actually go longer distances than multi-mode can. So 500 meters, and it's not even limited to this. Um, the cable can go on four kilometers, for 10 kilometers, five kilometers, both multi-mode and single mode. Like I said before, single mode can go further distances than multi-mode. Multi-mode is better for short distance fiber if you want to have a lot of bandwidth available. And that's it. That's the entire Ethernet protocol broken down in these two videos. So in the previous video, we looked at the actual Ethernet um, the layer two aspects of Ethernet, how we, the rules to send and receive data. In this video, we looked at the physical aspects. So we looked at Ethernet cabling, fiber cabling. We looked at how Ethernet cabling can be used to send and receive data, how it uses those wires. Those wires goes into certain pins and we transmit on those certain pins, crossover cables, um, which uh, can be used to essentially um, um, cross over the connections so pin one to pin three pin two to pin six so that we don't get any collision taking place on the wire actually one thing that i did forget to mention let me just go back very quickly so one thing that i forgot to mention is that we don't actually need to use crossover cables if we're using M auto mdix on both sides so auto mdix essentially when two devices transmit and receive on the on the same pin pairs auto mdix can uh, identify this and it will automatically swap over so that they're transmitting and receiving on, on different pin pairs. So we don't need to use crossover cables when we have auto MDIX enabled on both sides. And the way that we do that is that when it comes to configuration, we would configure both sides to use a duplex of auto and speed of auto. So to negotiate that between themselves. And then during that negotiation of what speeds they should use on the wire, whether they should use half duplex or full duplex, uh, they will actually be able to identify, okay, we're using the same pin pairs to transmit and receive, let's use different ones and let's swap that over so we avoid issues with sending ethernet frames. Okay, yeah, so this is this is this really is the end of the video. Um, so we looked at fiber cabling, ethernet cabling, etc. Like I said before, that if you enjoyed this video, then please subscribe to my channel, share this content so that we can get high quality IoT trading to the masses free of charge. Thank you very much.